Now we're gonna visit first probably the one that a lot of people I get asked for a lot. So um, we're gonna visit Judy Garland. Uh, movies like Meet Me in St. Louis, The Star is Born, you know, Wizard of Oz is probably the movie that she is known for the most and the one that comes to everybody's mind when they think of Judy Garland. So uh, off to the left here, there's the mausoleum straight ahead, is gonna be the Judy Garland Pavilion. So we're gonna go in there and uh, check it out. It's off to the left of the mausoleum over here. And here there's a guest book for her. Interesting, people putting messages to her. I put a message in here, but I'm not gonna divulge what it is. But I did put a message in there. Now we're gonna go to the Beth Alam mausoleum over here. And we're going to visit the crypt of gangster Bugsy Siegel. He was an organized crime figure. Uh, he was born in uh, 1906, February 28th, and died June 20th, 1947. 1906 to 1947. All right, he was born in Brooklyn, New York. He was the son of Russian Jewish immigrants. And early on, he began extorting protection money from a lot of local uh, stores and businesses. By the time he hit the ripe old age of 21, his crimes had already included acts of murder, drug trafficking, extortion, bootlegging, bookmaking, burglary, and armed robbery. And in 1941, he convinced mob bosses to invest $3 million in a hotel casino there in Las Vegas, and he is considered by many the father of Las Vegas, from what I've read. So let's go down to his crypt here. Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, February 28th, 1906 to June 20th, 1947. And it says, in loving memory from the family. I wonder what family they're talking about. His family or the family, if you know what I mean. But um, they've got like stuff here. You got a penny. Yep. Of course, chips, that's very fitting dice and somebody put oh look at that that's another item that's very fitting for someone of that of that uh, stature there and then there's um there's lip marks all over it and this stuff is not good for the uh the stone it's not see the stains from previous ones they, they wiped off that leaves stains on the stone unfortunately but that is the grave of Bugsy Siegel. And on the way out, it looks like I found uh, somebody of another one of yesteryear, Las Vegas, Mo Sedway, 1894 to 1952. He received notoriety for his part in managing with his partner Gus Greenbaum the Flamingo Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. At one point, he was instrumental in financing the construction of the hotel under his management. The hotel had a $4 million profit in the first year.
Wow. Since he had close colleagues in organized crime, he was labeled a gangster or a mobster. Wow, man. He uh, had part in the uh, Flamingo Hotel. And of course, very fitting, there's cards at the top of his stone. As a youth, he was in a uh, street gang with 12 years younger Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. So they have a connection there too. Wow. So here we go, another one that was responsible for Las Vegas the way it is today. The Flamingo Hotel Casino sold for $9 million in 1954. In 1958, his partner Greenbaum and his wife were murdered in their home. Hmm. Organized crime ties? Yeah, maybe, huh? Back at the Abbey of the Psalms. See what we can find in there. Here is actress Renee Adore, 1898 to 1933, and she was born in France. And she was actually a child of circus performers. And later on, as she got older, she performed in the circus as well. And her finding grave said she had begun acting as a teenager in France, and she performed in minor plays as well as dancing uh, with the Follies. And during one of her troops tours to Europe, it says here, World War I broke out while they were in Russia, and she had to escape to London. And then it says later on she came to New York in 1920 and continued to act on stage, and then finally came to the attention of American movie producers, and it says it took her a while to establish her reputation, and in 1920 she was only in one film, and in 1921 she was only in another film then. And then in 1922, she began to get more frequent work and then started to establish her career. Um, she's been in a bunch of movies in the 20s. Uh, just to name a few, Crisco in 1922, Daydreams 1922, The Eternal Struggle 1923, Bandolero 1924, Law, I'm sorry, Defying the Law 1924, Exchange of Wives 1925, and she's got a list of a few other movies. So yeah, once her career took off and she got noticed, she definitely got work. We got George D. Wallace, 1917 to 2005. Um, it says his most recognizable role was as Commando Cody in the serial Radar Men from the Moon in 1952. And his leather jacket and rocket pack and silver bullet-shaped helmet inspired Billy Campbell's costume in The Rocketeer in 1991, and he also acted on Broadway as well. So at the very, very top there, is Darla Jean Hood, 1931 to 1979, and she starred in The Little Rascals as a child. She was an Oklahoma native and made her debut as Darla in The Little Rascals art gang comedies at the age of four years old and continued the role until 1941. She also became a professional singer as an adult and appeared regularly on television shows and it also found out that her singing voice was familiar to millions of television viewers during the 1960s due to her work in commercials for Campbell's Soup, Chicken of the Sea Tuna, and uh, she died at the age of 47 from hepatitis contracted from a blood transfusion. Very interesting. She is in the Abbey of the Psalms, Sanctuary of Light, G4, Crypt 7213, on the top. Jesse L. Lasky, 1880 to 1958. Beloved son of California, who in 1913 headed the company that produced the first length motion picture made in Hollywood. His greatness never lacked simplicity. Carry the song along, the passage, you with the, with the soul of all there is in glory forevermore. Important figure here in Hollywood history. And there's Charlie Chaplin Jr., 1925 to 1968. 
and he was an actor in his own right. He had uh, a credit of about 13 films to his credit, uh, actually even starring in a movie with his father in 1952 called Limelight. And he is actually interred here with his uh, grandmother, Lillian Gray. And um, he died of a pulmonary embolism in 1968. That was weird, the lights just flickered in here. Yeah, that's weird. At the final resting place of Basil Dickey. It says he was a screenwriter and penned over 140 scripts during his career. He collaborated on Perils of Pauline, 1914, and Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe in 1940. So, and he has a whole list of credits that you know he's uh, written as well. But um, that's Basil Dickey, pretty well-known screenwriter. And we found Victor Fleming. He was a pretty famous uh, director in Hollywood. He directed The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind and got the award for uh, Best Director. The Academy Award for Best Director he received. And then that's his uh, wife. And then daughter, Victoria, 1935-2013. Lucille, 1895-1966. And somebody very nicely left this note. Thank you, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, 2023. And here is actor Clifton Webb, 1889 to 1966. It said he had a 50-year career in Hollywood. He's well known for films like Laura, 1944, Razor's Edge, 1946, and Cheaper by the Dozen in 1950. And he was extremely close to his mother until she died at the age of 91, and she is now interred beside him. Maybell, 1869 to 1960. And it is said about Clifton Webb that his ghost is said to haunt this corridor. People say they have had experiences with his ghost in this corridor where he's at. What do you guys think? Put it down in the comment box below. Here is guitarist Dick Dale, known as the king of surf guitar. And he played all kinds of styles of music and it says his technique was a precursor to heavy metal music and he played every, every instrument self-taught that he played and it says uh, he influenced guitarists such as Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen and Johnny Ramone. Very interesting. Here's the grave of Alberto Valentino, older brother of Rudolph Valentino, 1892 to 1981. And it says he was an actor and studio worker, and he is actually here with his wife, Ada. A little bit of a nugget. I wonder how many people actually know this and come here to visit him. Yeah, we found some interesting characters. Pete T. Stanley, and it's I've heard he's the piano man. I just found this grave really interesting. I did it my way. It says 1939 to 2010. But what really caught my eye on this grave wasn't just how cool it is right here. 
but there's a uh, little piano over here, which I thought was really cool. This cemetery has so many unique things. There's so much going on here. I don't want to step off the path here too much. I don't know. If they got people's pictures and names on it. There's uh beautiful. This stuff in here is just gorgeous. Where are, there's a peacocks over here, the Hollywood Forever peacocks. They have a colony of cats and they got a bunch of peacocks here. Earlier one of them was walking up to me. I don't know if he wanted to attack me or what. They're just free roaming all around the cemetery here. It's insane. They have a coop for them over by the front gate. But um, they're pretty much free to roam. Arthur Letts. He was a businessman. He was the founder of Broadway department stores and Bullocks. And was responsible for developing a great deal of Hollywood. He also purchased and developed Westwood, Homebly Hills, and the UCLA campus. And another little factoid about his son. His son, Arthur Letts Jr., built the Playboy Mansion. So there's a little bit of uh, history in this family here. Bullock's department stores. And then the son built the Playboy Mansion. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this thing is full of spiderweb. There's that vase on that back table in there. It's just got a, like a covering of just spiderwebs, cobwebs, and everything. And this pond fountain area is gorgeous. Hattie McDaniel, 1895 to 1952, renowned performer, Academy Award 1939, Gone with the Wind. Aunt Hattie, you are a credit to your craft, your race, and to your family, Edgar Goff. Dedication, October 26, 1999. Edward Simonian. Uh, it said he set up a small furniture making shop in a small Hollywood apartment. Shared with his wife and daughter. He opened his own store on Melrose Avenue in 1978 with his saved money had often had to build furniture on the sidewalk because he did not have enough room inside. Today that venture has grown into a block long storefront for two companion firms, Edmunds Unique Furniture and Edmunds Stone Gallery.
He was born May 5th, 1941, died June 17th, 2010. Anton Yelchin, he is an actor, and um, when I showed him on my live stream the other day, when I was walking this on my live stream, a lot of you guys knew who he was, or some of you did. He was uh, the son of a couple of figure skaters, I do believe, and they came to the U.S. when he was an infant. So he played a young Kyle Reese in Terminator Salvation, and he played Chekhov in the reboot of Star Trek. I knew about the Terminator thing. I'm not a big Star Trek fan, so I really wasn't familiar about that and some of his other movies I'm familiar with. But that one bit about the Star Trek movie I didn't know. But some of you guys on my live stream have said his mother visits quite often. I guess the cause of death was some kind of freak accident. He was uh, pinned between his Jeep Cherokee and a brick pillar gatepost outside his house in Studio City, Los Angeles. And I guess the family had filed a wrongful death uh, lawsuit against, uh, I guess, Jeep, from what I heard. Because they felt something was faulty with the car. Valerie Harper from the Mary Tyler Moore show Rhoda the Hogan family I almost missed her grave because of all of this, uh, the plants they have in here. The picture I had was, I guess, for all the plants grew and everything. And I almost missed it. I thought it was just part of the, the bush or the tree or something. There was a few people over there waiting to see Valerie Harper's grave, so I couldn't stick around too long. But I remember, uh, yeah, Rhoda. I remember that show. What was your favorite show? It's crazy. From the moment I first drove in and parked my car and got out of the car on Tuesday and walked around, this place just, just looking at everything, it just screams Hollywood. Old Hollywood, too. Well, there's a lot of old-time actors in here, but yeah, definitely uh, a very cool place. What you doing? So of course you saw Jane Mansfield's uh, stone. It's actually a cenotaph. Um, there were just a lot of people coming by to visit the the area, so I just walked away and let them do their thing. Uh, she was born April nineteenth, nineteen thirty three, and died June 29th, nineteen sixty seven. And she was an actress. Her first role was in Female Jungle in nineteen fifty four. Her second role was Pete Kelly's Blues, 1955, and she was Playboy Magazine's Play to Made of the Month for February 1955, which helped introduce her to a motion picture career that she had. And it said her willingness to appear in scantily clad clothing combined with her sex appeal gained her a number of roles as either a sex kitten or as a dumb blonde. Although she did play the occasional respectable role. She was mostly stuck with those sex kitten type roles. And something I didn't know until not too long ago that she's the mother of Mariska Hardigay, uh, the actress. Never knew that until uh, just like a few months ago. And on June 29th, 1967, while traveling in between engagements, she was killed on Highway 90 between Sedell and New Orleans when her car struck the back end of a tractor trailer. Wow. And I've seen that car, what it looks like. Um, I've seen it on display before, and I've seen pictures of it. And it, 
yeah, it's uh, it's a mess. And being that the stone here is a cenotaph, she's actually, from what I understand, buried at Fairview Cemetery in uh, Pennsylvania. One of the Hollywood legends. And here's the grave of actor Tyrone Power. He was born May 5th, 1914, died November 15th, 1958. And he has a whole string of movies. I love his graveside there. Right next to the pond here too. And he was a veteran as well. And they have the, the comedy and uh, the masks, the comedy tragedy, I think. And it's at the end of it's a book, as you can see, which is very cool. And he was one of the most popular movie stars of the 1930s and 40s. And his movie credits include, he was in movies such as The Mask of Zorro, This Above All, Crash Dive, Razor's Edge, Prince of Foxes, The Black Rose, Rawhide, Untamed, The Long Gray Line, among a bunch of others. And I've been doing a little bit of walking around. This is the back end of the cathedral mausoleum where uh, Rudolph Valentino is. But they have that door on this side locked and chained up. So only the front side's open. Okay, let's go see some of the Hollywood Forever cats again. It's insane. They, they This place totally embraces the cats. They actually... Um, there's a an email if you want they have them on their Facebook page and there's actually an email that you can write to and they have pictures of the cats on their social media and say if you want to adopt some you have to email them and come down for a visit I guess so these cats are up for adoption but you got to come down here I guess and check it out and maybe pick one out yourself I guess from what it sounds like Oh, there's only a couple down here, I think, today. There was a black one. Oh, they're inside the little... Is that a cat box or is it a, a kennel for them? Well, they get plenty of food and water down here, that's for sure. Oh, the babies. What you guys doing? Hi, baby. What you doing? You're in the cat box. Aww. There's three, shoot, there's like, what, three brown ones here. Hi, baby. Hey, yeah, that's a cat box. The brown ones seem to be really chill. Hi, babies. Hi. Hi. What you guys doing? You guys seem like you're the coolest out of the whole bunch. You guys just chilling. Plenty of food and water. Oh, unfortunately, the wet food gets gets ants, but um, the dry food seems pretty chill. Oh, your little baby. You know, if I could, I'd I would adopt you, all of you guys, if I could. Oh, your little babies. What you doing, little babies? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they're their little siblings. So if you guys are in the area and want to adopt one of these cats, let Hollywood Forever know. So today, it's, it's really chill today. I remember the other day, um, on Tuesday, my first day here, there was so much going on. There were people look like coming through on little mini tours. They had people on golf carts they were driving around, doing like, um, you know, doing little tours with um, like the uh, Hollywood Forever staff I guess on Saturday this coming Saturday there's gonna be a tour from 10 to 12 30 10 a.m. to 12 30 p.m. but 
Um, I'm probably going to be on the road by then, so I probably won't be able to take the tour. And it's like 20 something dollars a person. So maybe I'll take the tour if I ever come back, which I'm hoping to someday. I'll, t I'll pay for that tour and take it. I mean, it is Saturday. I'll be here Saturday, but what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Now, since I've been here in Hollywood forever, I'm sure you guys have seen out in the distance, out in the middle of the pond on this man-made island, this huge family mausoleum. It is the Clark family, uh, namely William Andrews Clark Jr. Now, he was in Los Angeles a successful attorney. Um, he was also the son of Senator William Andrews Clark and made his own fortune in mining as well. And he loved classical music. He founded, get this, the Los Angeles Philharmonic in 1919 and founded it until his death. He also donated buildings to his alma mater, the University of Virginia and the New University of Nevada, Reno, and to UCLA. And he also bequeathed the William Andrews Clark Memorial Library with its extensive collection of rare books and manuscripts. His personal life was stu uh, struck by tragedy. His first wife, Mabel, died giving birth to their only son, who was killed in 1931 in a plane crash. His second wife, Alice, also died prematurely. And the Clark family mausoleum says 1920, on an island in a man-made lake is the most imposing memorial here at Hollywood Forever. And it's gotta be definitely the most imposing for sure. Now let's go over and take a look at it real quick. This uh, is incredible over here. Now we're not gonna be able to get inside this thing, but I was able to obtain pictures of the inside of this thing. And you know what guys, it is <laughs> spectacular. I'll probably throw the pictures um, in there at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that after we're done looking at the um, outside of the mausoleum. Oh, look at this. It's got fountains out here all by themselves on an island. And there's a walkway here to get across to it. How beautiful this is. They're probably gonna kick me out of here in a second. It's about closing time, but I don't care. This is just stunning. <laughs> the duckies. This thing is the gotta be the biggest monument here. And they said it's the most imposing, which I agree with. Now, like I said, it's got his name there in the, in the this top step here. William Andrews Clark Jr. This thing is gorgeous. This door is awesome. Like I said, I was able to obtain pictures from the inside. I found online, so I could totally throw them in. You know, at the end of this video, it's be inside's beautiful. It's deep. It's very deep and it's very beautiful. Man, this thing is huge. And there's 
turtles out on the rock out here. Very prominent family here in Los Angeles. And they've got the uh, mausoleum to prove it. Attorneys and, and mining. Father was in, I think his father was into copper mining. I read as well. Beautiful. With all the ducks. This bad boy is huge, guys. And since I've been here, I've been looking at it, and being I've been running around looking for celebrities and stuff, I really haven't had time to stop and research what it is. But it is a, a prominent family, the Clark family. Marred with tragedy, William Clark's wife, died prematurely. I had two wives that died. It's insane. All right, guys, thank you so much. Just wanted to share this one with you because you're probably going to see it in some of my videos. And um, I just kind of wanted to get down to the bottom of what it was. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon. Therefore, you can be notified of all of my future uploads, guys. It was a pleasure to bring you this beautiful mausoleum. And on the outside here, there's Anne Heche, the actress. I did a video, last video I mentioned her. And then Mickey Rooney, over here. Oh, they got a monument for Toto from The Wizard of Oz. In memory of Toto. Toto. It says on the side here, this monument is dedicated to the memory of the beloved Toto from the 1939 film The Wizard of Oz. After the death of Toto, originally named Terry, in 1945, owner and trainer Carl Spitz buried the terrier on his ranch in Studio City. The 1958 construction of the Ventura Freeway destroyed her resting place. Oh, So this is what they got left to, in memory of. Oh man, they built a freeway over her resting place. Oh man. Oh, poor baby.
Alicia Benham. 67 to 2021 shining star a beautiful smile full of love life and laughter forever loved forever in our hearts wow that's sad she was young i tell you what this mausoleum video was hard to film because like i said before it was super busy inside there today people were coming through on tours just coming in uh rudolph valentino i do believe he is listed as the most famous person here at this cemetery is what I heard he gets a ton of visitors and when I was over there filming his spot whew, there was people coming by the droves I kept having to stop but here we're on the outside of the mausoleum and down there at the very end there's one of the Hollywood forever cats that you're always seeing about on, on social media and way down there I don't want to disturb him but there's a there's a cat box and a bunch of them laying on top of um, a cat box and there's food and water down there for them too but here's the baby uh, there's all they talk about these cats on um, social media a lot hi baby hey baby uh oh I might have to come back there was a couple more people I wanted to see here that um I couldn't just because it was so much going on inside there at the moment I was inside but this place is just beautiful and I was just there's still there's plenty of spots in here so there's just Woodrow Charles Herman, Woody, May 16th, 1913 to October 29th, 1987. Beloved husband of Charlotte and father of Ingrid, legendary band, band leader, instrumentalist, vocalist, teacher, editor, and road father whose brilliant career spanned over 50 years. He will be remembered for his major contributions in the world of music and to his fellow man. And there's just a bunch of the outside of this um, mausoleum as well. Paul Basile Jr., beloved by all, 1945 to 2020. And then they have these right here. Scotty Teresa, 1893 to 1970. And Anthony Charles, 1918 to 1978. name yet just um, picture Wow this place is massive there's the Douglas Fairbanks um, memorial here This outside area is just massive. Alan Mitchell Romero, our fatty. September 26, 2015, October 3rd, 2016. Oh, will always be in our hearts. That's sad. What you doing, babies? Huh? What you doing? 
Oh, you big pretty babies. Hi, pretty baby. Hi. Hello, pretty baby. Oh, poor baby. They're just here in the little vent ways of the, um, underneath the mausoleum is all the piping and everything. It looks like it's, I could see in there. And the cats are just chilling over here.